Hey, Jim Bergman with Measure Quick. I wanted to go over a little bit today on package units. We get a lot of questions about package units and how does Measure Quick work with package units. And uh, I just wanted to more or less go over some of the features of Measure Quick that we've added in recently, especially on the electrical measurement side and on the benchmarking side. First thing you'll notice when you work on a package unit, you know, like this one here is a, an American Standard or train unit. You know, we have this wide open uh, hole here that goes into our condenser. So when we're doing our testing, we want to make sure that air does not enter through the compressor compartment because that's going to drive the head pressure way up. It's going to bypass the condenser instead of going into the, into the uh, coil. So what we want to be able to do is put the door on. And these smart probes are really slick because, you know, I can have the suction line, liquid line, the high and the low pressure hooked up here. If I was going to add charge in, I just run a single hose into the machine with a charging tee and run out one of the uh, side ports here on the unit. So I can get everything inside here where I need to make my measurements and then I can go ahead and throw this door on here before I start the unit. Now, a lot of people say, well, how are you gonna make electrical, electrical measurements when you have the door on the unit? And that's pretty simple. We're just gonna do it through the disconnect. Now, you could run this out. Um, if I was doing this on a job site, I would just disconnect the thermostat and either use a, a you know, just an extension of thermostat wire or something so I could run it out and do what I'm doing here. On this unit here, I've got a stat here so we can actually uh, uh, just test it with a thermostat. So I know you don't have the convenience of having your own thermostat hooked up, but for me, I've got it here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just turn my fan to on. Now, in Measure Quick, we're doing a couple of different things, right? Again, we're trying to measure the performance of the system. So I wanna know, you know what the EER or the SEER is, as well as I wanna know what my, um, what my fan watt draw is. So I've got this system profiled here. I'm gonna go into the profile just to show you this. And under the system information, you're gonna see it's a package unit, scroll, three phase, 36,000 BTUs, 410A. I've got a, a 13 to 16, and I've got a superheat and subcooling set to 10. Now, train or American standard, if you take a look at this, I'll have Val come over so you guys can see what's going on here. Now they use a chart where you have the liquid pressure leaving the outdoor coil. So in this case, I just drew a line from 300 over till it crossed and then show the corresponding temperature. Now, if we look at the Danfoss app for a minute, we we'll switch screens here, you'll see at 300 PSIG, we're at 95 degrees condensing temp. If you go back to this chart here, and zoom back in here again, you'll see that this correlates to 85 degrees. So 95 minus 85 is 10 degrees of subcooling. And so in the Measure Quick app, that's what we're gonna set this thing up for is 10 degrees of subcooling in the profile. So go back into Measure Quick, and that's where we have it set, all right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and get the fan watt draw, or get the fan draw on this. So I'm just gonna hit continue. I'm gonna go into the electrical section of the project, and you're gonna see here that I have this uh, set up, and let me just go ahead and hook up a meter here, because it's not gonna give me auto capture option until I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the redfish meter. I'm going to set it to volts to start with and just go back in and we'll go back into electrical here and you're going to hear it's going to do a little beep here. So now you can see we have a button on here called auto capture. So if I click on the auto capture button, you'll see the meter goes to waiting. So the first one I want to do here is L2 to, or L1 to L2. So down here, I'm just going to go ahead and measure L1 to L2 and what you're going to hear is what we did in the auto capture is allow it to, uh, your two tones that it captured it. So we, we got the one, two, three, that's captured. I'm gonna pull it back off and we're gonna get a single cone telling it disconnected. Now I'm gonna go L2 to L3. And then pull it back off and you're gonna single tone it disconnected. And then L1 to L3 and pull it off and it disconnected. Now the small delay is for the meter to stabilize so we can sense the voltage stabilized. Now I'm just gonna move it over to amps. And when I move it over to amps, I'm just gonna go L1, L2, L3. So again, I'll clamp it around. You'll see our amp draw come up, stabilize, take it off. It's gotta go back to zero, put it on L2. Pull it off, it's gotta go back to zero and then L3. So this allows us to do all the voltage readings real quick without having to hit the capture button. If we come up here now, we can check these. So you see I'm 209, 209, 210, 26, 26, 27 on, on phase three. So now I can scroll down here and I wanna move down and capture them at the condenser. 
So now what I'm going to do is, is turn the, the system to on, and we'll give this a few minutes to stabilize, and then I'll come back and I'll show you what we're doing. All right, so the system stabilized a little bit, and you can see uh, right from the factory we're running about 18 degrees of subcooling, so the system's a little bit overcharged. Also, you know, we don't have a duct system on here, so we're moving about 477 CFM per ton. And if you take a look at the, the superheat on here, it's running about 8 tenths. So I'm sure MeasureQuick's picking up that it could have a loose TXV bulb. In fact, let's just take a look here. We got liquid line temperatures low, and that's because we have, we're stacking liquid in the condenser. We've got low load on the evaporator, cooling the shop in here. System may be overcharged, high subcooling, and then we have that really low superheat. So we, we do need to go through and check a couple other things here. But while we're here, I'm just gonna go to get electrical measurements now in the condenser. So back in the electrical measurement section here, we'll scroll down a little bit. You see it's the auto capture's on because it says waiting here. So again, we're gonna go to L1 to L2. We'll get the voltage on the condenser. So I have to make sure I have the meter set to voltage here. We'll go ahead and get L1 to L2. Again, you're gonna hear a double tone, a triple tone. So that's telling us it's captured. We'll pull it off. We got it. We'll do L2 to L3. Pull it off and then L3 to L1. Got it. Now we're just gonna switch the meter to amps. Go across, got it, go back to zero, back on, back to zero, and back on L3. So if we come up here down the app here, you can see we got our voltages all in the 208, 209 range, and our amperage is on the machine. If we go, if we hit down, we'll just hit continue. And we can look at our performance for just a minute. Oops, so we hit performance here. So you can see we're doing about 11, uh, 11 EER, and I believe this is a 12 SEER uh, rooftop unit. So very, very quick and easy to grab the voltages and the amperages now. You can do it pretty much hands-free. We want to make the, the three-phase capturing a little bit easier and safer to do. Looks like I've got a little bit of work to do on this rooftop unit, but uh, we'll have that done pretty quickly. Now also, I just wanted to point out here on the benchmarking side, so I'm going to go back to the info screen. You can see that System info right now has got a red thumbprint. And again, we talked about benchmarking is capturing the personality. So if I wanted to say, hey, Mrs. Jones isn't gonna do anything with a system, I'd hit the plus key here, and I'll set a benchmark. It's gonna bring up a benchmark under duress. So I'm gonna click that for just a minute. We show it's been benchmarked and it's under duress. If we go back here, you're gonna see that there's a yellow thumbprint on here now, and there's a yellow thumbprint, yellow thumbprint here on the benchmark a yellow thumbprint here in the subcooling showing us that the subcooling is too high. And then also if we scroll through here a little bit, we'll see if there's any other yellow thumbprints, which there's not because everything else would be acceptable. So it's just showing us, hey, when we left that unit, it was benchmarked, but the yellow benchmark means it was benchmarked under duress. If we got the subcooling right we re and we re-benchmarked it, it would benchmark green telling us that everything is good. So red is not benchmarked, yellow is benchmarked under duress, Green is benchmarked and everything was in the correct ranges on there. So we added this feature in, again, to make it a little bit easier to understand what the benchmark's doing. So when we have this project here and we go back and we go back again and we exit and save it to the cloud, that all that information is gonna be stored for next time. And if another tech comes out, we will know exactly what condition the machine was in when it was benchmarked. So pretty cool stuff, makes it very easy to work on package units and it should make your job a lot more fun and, and just a lot more easier to do. This is Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. Thanks a lot for watching.